You ready? On your mark, it's a goal. I think one of the greatest things, too, is as you're reading the Bible, to remember, say, Holy Spirit, it says that the Spirit interprets the Bible, like the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. And you just say, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you would show us what you what what is being told to us. You give us revelation right now. We thank you, Lord, that you would show us what you're saying and really show us what, what we're hearing, too. Because you know what? We still, at this old ages, I mean, these two, not me, obviously. I'm super young, right? But at our older ages, we're still learning and seeing new things from the Bible every time you read it. So yeah. it's like, so don't, you know what? This is awesome. So we're going to start in 19, uh, John 5, 19. That's to, why she's in the middle. So that's right. I look really young in the middle of these two people. Uh, to this charge, Jesus replied, in truth and very truth, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. What the Father does, the Son does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all his works and will show greater yet to fill you with wonder. As the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son gives life to men as he determines. And again, the Father does not judge anyone, but has given full jurisdiction to the Son. It is his will that all should pay the same honor to the Son as to the Father. To deny honor to the Son is to deny it to the Father who sent him. So that's good to know. Yes. Well, and you know what? It's kind of like chip chip off the old block. <laughs> you've seen the if you've seen if the you've son, seen you've seen, seen the, the father. If you've seen the says, son, right? you've seen the father, and you know you guys, he's just like his dad. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that's if you want to simplify it, he's just like his dad. Yeah. He, he came uh, in other places that you'll find in the scriptures. He came to show us exactly what God uh, does. And what God says, mm -hmm. right? And I think too is is in this and in our time, the Jews believed in the Father, but they didn't yet believe in the Son. And so to understand that you actually come to the Father through the Son, and Jesus is saying very clearly here that you don't just believe in God; you believe in the Son, and that honors the God, uh, honors God, right? Yeah. Like so, Son is very important here. It is the only way to the Father. Jesus is very clear about that. Yes. So then let's start, let's keep going in 24. It says, in very truth, anyone who gives heed to what I say and puts his trust in him who sent me has hold of eternal life and does not come up for judgment, but has already passed from death to life. In truth, in very truth, I tell you, a time is coming. Indeed, it is already here when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and all who hear shall come to life for as the Father has life-giving power in himself, so has the Son by the Father's gift. Crazy. Good. Whew. Well, I think it, it you know it illustrates the Father's plan, right? Right. I mean, the he, he knew from the very beginning that something would have to be done to to woo us back to God. You know, uh you, you know, you can't say, love God with all your heart and mind right now or I'll kill you. You know, that, <laughs> that doesn't work. But, but, when you, but when you don't go yourself, but you send your son and, and have him come and show you what the father is really like and, and, and beck you and say, you know, once you get to know him, he's just like me. You'll really like him. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so there's that, there's that wooing. Mm -hmm. That that Jesus, he's that so gracious, Jesus so came. kind, yeah, it, exactly. So because wow. I, you know, when when you read on, you know, like mm -hmm. the little kids wanted to sit on his knee, and <laughs> yeah. and uh, everywhere he went, I mean, crowds just gathered. I mean, he's walking along the shore, and somebody asks him a question. Pretty soon, a whole crowd comes. Right. They wanted to hang out, with them, yeah. right? And uh, you know, and that was he's you know, a cool dude. Exactly, and <laughs> and his father is a cool. It's dude. a cool dude, that's and for his, sure. And uh, and that's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. Is that like? If you see me, you see my dad. And we're, we're pretty cool. Right. We're together. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're one in the same. And he's right? talking about being born again, again. Right? Because he was talking about when you come to the sun, you get to live now. Right? Like, it, it was, it's yeah. talking about there's no judgment. And he's like, God has sent me. And that God, you know, that the Father brings resurrection life. And now I bring you life. Yeah. Before you die. Like, he really is it being happens. quite clear about being alive 
to those that are already dead, which is like, which is everybody on the earth. Everybody was already, was actually dead until they come to Jesus, right? Like in the, in the death of like their spirit was all, was, was death, right? And so he's talking again about how he's bringing life to now, not just when you pass from this life to, to heaven, right? It's like, now I'm giving you life like the father wants, which I think is really important. He always is reiterating being born again, you know? And, um, I like I, I like that the because it, it, it talks about judgment the judgment of the father and the judgment of the son mm-hmm. and it's it's not the father now it's in the son and the son doesn't uh, didn't come to judge the world he came mm-hmm. to save the world mm-hmm. and uh, all of all of those kinds of things uh, are quite exciting and here, here here's a scripture from Romans I think it is and and this really clears it up for me. It says, God's way of righting all wrongs was to send Jesus, mm-hmm. right? And because we believe that Jesus is, is that answer, he, you yeah. know, and then Jesus says, if you believe me, mm-hmm. you'll honor the Father. And uh, he says, God made everything right by sending Jesus. And we now have received his rightness, if you will. Yeah. We're in right standing it, it, simply believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died for our sins, yeah. we are in right standing with God, and, and all the other stuff that we work out is just that we're working it out. But we're in right standing through the Son, and that's what I think it's saying to us: is like God did this uh, just so simply for us, so that we were just we're just right before God because we believe that He sent us. Yeah, Amen. Right? So, verse twenty-seven. As son, as son of man, which he's talking about himself, Jesus, he has also been given, or he is, Jesus has been given the right to pass judgment. So I thought that's it, you know, that's interesting too, right? Do not wonder at this because the time is coming when all who are in the, gra- in the grave shall hear his voice and move forth. Those who have done right will rise to life. Those who have done wrong will rise to their doom. I cannot act by myself. I judge as I am bidden. And my verdict is just because my aim is not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And moving forward to it says, if I testify on my own behalf, that testimony does not hold good. This is another who bears witness for me. And I know that his testimony holds. Your messengers have been to John. You have his testimony to the truth. Not that I rely on human testimony, but I remind you of it for your own salvation. Um, John was a lamp burning brightly, and for a time you were ready to exalt in his light. But I rely on testimony higher than John's. There is enough to testify that the Father has sent me in the works my Father gave me to do and to finish the very works I have in hand. This testimony to me was given by the Father who sent me, although you never heard his voice or saw his form, but his word has found no home in you. For you do not believe the one whom he sent. You study the scriptures diligently, supposing that in having them you have eternal life. Yet all, although their testimony points to me, you refuse to come to me for that life. Okay, so now he's talking to mm-hmm. the, uh, the the leadership. The, of the Pharisees, the Pharisees, Pharisees and, Sadducees, and Sadducees, yeah. Sadducees. And he's trying to convince them through, uh, through the interpretation of, of the Old Testament that the Old Testament like the scriptures are talking about me yeah and you can't see that yeah why can't you see that it's it, it's it's all it's already it's all there it's all there uh, for to show that I I, I am sent of the father right? mm-hmm. and so they're waiting for the Messiah and the Messiah is talking to them right and they can't see it right and what about in our own lives though like the things that when we have perceived concept of God let's say you just already thought God was like this and now that you've come to him and you're a brand new believer yeah. it's like you you will come up against something that you're like okay the Bible says this but I always thought God was like this and it's like you do come to the places of your own traditions and your own maybe your past how you were brought up yeah. and you have to go hey listen this is the truth the truth is this is what Jesus is like it's not what I thought he was like and you have to just bow that opinion and say, I will, I will believe what the Bible says, not what my traditions or my thoughts or my prejudices have thought in the past. Even about the, even about church or even about God's people, 
we can have a lot of biases about people who serve God too, which some yeah, are well, warranted. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> some are true. But, well, I think too that you know, it, uh, having a you know, having worked as a mechanic and and uh, having that background, uh, especially with today's cars, you can't just mm. you can't just open the hood and and uh, you know adjust the points or you know it. You have to go to the manual. You have to go to that specific manual right. to find out exactly how General Motors designed that vehicle and put it together. And and uh, if you're going to do any repairs, or even if you're going to drive the thing, you know you you have to study the manual. It used to be you could get in, start the car, and go. Right. But now there's all these buttons and gadgets and the heat, yeah, that's for seat sure. heaters <laughs> and steering wheel heaters and GPS and I mean every technological. <laughs> advancement known to man, they seem to shoehorn it on the car somehow, right? <laughs> and right. and if you don't if you don't have the if you don't have the manual or somebody teach you or show you, mm -hmm. then then you're sort of in in limbo. And uh, um, you know, my, my dad bought a, a new car and it came all the way from Oregon without putting on the cruise control because he didn't know how to do it. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And and you know that's to me that's a good picture of our right. life. We're, you know, we're, we're on, we're, we're not using cruise control and we're not, when Jesus is talking about life, he's mm -hmm. talking about, he said, like, I've come to give you a, a life like you've never known. I mean, I'll show you how to use cruise control. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how to use power windows and, and uh, I'll show you all of the intricacies, how to use your GPS and all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. In verse uh, 30, he, he says, um, because I don't seek my own will, but the Father who sent me, because mm -hmm. God has a has a plan. Just the same way as General Motors engineered that car, God has an engineered life for us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is coming and saying, "I'll I'll I'll give you that life. I'll show you how to do all of those kinds of things." And we really and, do miss so much, and we're still missing so much of the things that we are that are untapped from the uh, life of faith or whatever. And that's why you keep reading the, the manual, which is the Bible. And yeah, keep yeah. going, show me more revelation because yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be able to do this, but I'm not seeing it. You know, like I drove in a new car and go, I don't know how to work this car. You know what I mean? So yeah. sometimes that's how it feels in the spirit realm too. That's why we need revelation all the yeah, time. And too know? often, you know, we just get in, start it up, put it in <laughs> yeah. gear and go. Don't even know what and, we have at our disposal. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, true. That's and, life, uh, eh? Go ahead. Um, this reminds me of of uh, what I've been thinking for for about a month, I guess, is that the, the scientists and the biologists and all of the all of the guys with with these education, you know, like the smart the guys, doctorates the smart, in front the of doctor, their name. Smart, <laughs> and they've done such a great job of of discovery. Like they've yeah. discovered so many things, and they put those discoveries together in sequence to make something work, or you know, to fly an airplane, or to cut up uh, an atom and you know I'm like it's just it's amazing what they have found and what they've discovered but you know they never just they never made anything they only discovered what's already there right exactly right yeah and I'm I'm looking at that going oh yeah and that's what we're doing mm -hmm. we're discovering what's already there and, right and the, the the education of it all comes out of the book yeah right and as we as we find principle after principle and discover how God works and how the Spirit of God works and how we're to work with Him, we're discovering what's already there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all we're doing. We're just discovering God. We're discovering His ways, and it's like, yes, that's 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 why when it's a learning, we're in we're in a learning curve. We're we're learning more and more about how things work than we ever knew before, and so. Put, put aside the old ideas, right? And even me, myself, I mean, I've been studying for 50 years, right? And Gary, too. Uh, we still hold it really lightly because we know there's, there's, more. there's more, right? Yeah. The stuff that really works, we got it, we got it. And and that's what we, that's how we live. But we're also always looking to see what else is there, else, right? Yeah. And so that's that's kind of what I see here. Is this is I've come, uh, I'm sent by my father. Me and my father have agreed together to do it this way. And if you if you go in some of our teachings before, 
uh, God made the plans before he ever started the earth. He already knew exactly what was going to happen. Now we're discovering what he already planned. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. He, he told the, the Pharisees in, in verse 38, he, and you mentioned this already, okay. but, but you do not have his word abiding in you. Living right? in you, which yeah. is the right abiding and living in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have that word living, living in you. Uh, and and so you know that's the that's our quest now. Mm -hmm. I want to get that word living in me, not mm -hmm. just you know words on a page or you know do this, do that, or seven steps to this, or mm -hmm. you know keep these commandments, but but have that living the word living inside mm -hmm. of you because that's what Jesus was saying to the to the Pharisees. Come on, you guys. I mean, you've been studying this stuff for all this time and you mm -hmm. don't get it. Yeah. You don't it's get not it. It's alive. not a boat. Yeah. It's not alive. Yeah. 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 So you that, can't see. Yeah, that reminds me of, uh, and we already took this in, I think it was uh, John 4, the Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. And the disciples came and they said, who gave you to eat? He says, no, you don't understand. My food or my meat comes from doing the will of my father. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm looking at that going, what's he, what's he talking about? How do, how do I translate that? Get the nourishment that comes from that. I'm nourished by knowing the will of God. And, mm. and it's kind of it, 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 to abide and to have the word inside of you. And it, it's, it's like eating. You're like, yeah. And it gives you strength in whatever area. If you have, say, a broken mind, you say, no. There's a scripture that says he has given me love, power, and, and, and a sound mind. Yeah. There's another scripture that says, I, re I renew the, the spirit of my mind. And, you know, and so what do you do? You, you get on that, you just chew it eat it and, and all of a sudden it now becomes your nutrition for a cleaner mind and for a stronger mind and mm -hmm. so that's what I mean that's what I think we mean by abide uh, uh, keep it and make the principle of it work in your life mm -hmm. right so how are we doing for time time's up okay we'll see you next week